Are you guys ready for the hottest new bass fishing techniques of 2024? Fire! We're about to <laughs> unbox them right now. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are unboxing some of the hottest new bass fishing techniques for 2024. We are excited to try out this year and share with you. And we're obviously not going to be the first people to talk to you about these, but we're the coolest. <laughs> That's so untrue. This I is know. just what we're excited about. We've seen a lot of you guys yeah. asking about it, and we keep seeing other people post about it, so we know that there's some curiosity out there. So we went, we spent some money we got some stuff we brought it here like well, i think we start out with uh the rods yes biggest item rods oh, no we <laughs> really break them okay much respect you don't usually get this you guys so it's hard to tell but that's foam yep. around the top end of the reel it's a thick piece you too. never get that it's usually just jammed in there that's quality dude that's quality yep. so they have two different lengths so we have yep. two different rods both are two pieces but the lengths of both the tubes they came in it's not like a one size fits all where one of them's just bouncing around mine's three pieces they must cut these to match the rod that they're shipping Jesus. Stop. <laughs> relax i like that a lot i think that tells me that they are just like they're just doing a better job than most other companies. I think we got a light and an ultra light. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure they also have a feather light. Uh, we opted against that because the last time we had a feather light, Paul broke it immediately. It wasn't that hard to break. So we said maybe we're not cut out for feather lights. Bro, I'm still. So yours is two piece? Yeah. How long is it? Shut up and let me figure it out. All right. <laughs> so mine is <laughs> six, six foot nine. So first thing to point out on rods that are multiple pieces is you want to be looking for these ultra long ferrules. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to give your rod a lot more backbone and prevent you from snapping at the joints. Notice they don't go all the way together. Don't make the mistake that I made early on in my fishing career where I got a Cast King two-piece and I was like, why? Why won't these two pieces connect? And I tried to just jam it on down there. Don't do that. They don't connect on purpose. This gives it more strength at that little joint. Okay, so first look at the grip there. This is the Cast King Kestrel. I have the six foot nine light edition. Uh, so this is gonna be set up and it says right here, 110 to five eighths of an ounce. That's right. That's a huge range. You can do a lot with this. So three to eight pound test line is what they're recommending. So it's got all the information for your line and lure weight. And then you got the power right up top here as well, where it says light. Pretty fantastic looking rods. We have had the spinning rods. Paul broke his, I still have mine. They're nice. They're nice. The grips, very comfortable. It's got this nice foam that's very comfortable right there. And it's extra grippy even when it gets wet. That's what you want to see. But it's Short. so small, it's the perfect size. This thing's so sick. So it's very comfortable in hand. And then you've got a premium screw lock here for the reel, which is great. It's also a short split grip, which is awesome for my kayak guys. And anybody wanting to just use lighter tackle, it's just nice to have. It's so light. So there's mine. It's a very light rod. It's yeah, it's super light. I'm gonna read you a couple of the a uh, couple of the key statistics. I have a very similar rod. Oh, I'm Paul. I can read. That's <laughs> all right. It is using six layers of carbon or of graphite and carbon fiber. Now everyone has like their ver not everyone, but a lot of companies have their version of this. I have seen where the layering and the weaving of the way that the rod like is constructed yields to a stronger or more sensitive design. We saw this with like the new X series that Okuma put out and you could tell just by picking it up, like it makes a huge difference. Same with the psycho stick, it looked super nice. I'm not going to go through all of it, but it just keeps it light, makes it sensitive and strong. Uh, American tackle, uh, forged guides with, uh, I think these are titanium, with aluminum oxide rings. Super light. Best of the best. Super strong. Like these guides are going to be extremely quality. And we saw that with some, 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 the spinning stuff as well. Um, Real seats are American Tackle as well. This is the Vibe 2. So they basically put this together, American Tackle did, for, for this rod. And I'm telling you, when we found that out, it's hard to believe that that high of a quality of uh, guide, real seat and carbon fiber slash graphite rod can be under a hundred bucks. That's stupid. That's insane. The it's, price of this it's rod insane. is stupid. It's really insane. So they have uh, eight models from feather light all the way to light and the ratings and line weights go from one to three pounds to three to eight pounds. That's, they have such an offering. It's kind of freaking nuts. Uh, so I have the two piece. Another thing I wanted to point out here is the way that they write uh, the, all the stuff, like the statistics of the rod, they don't put it here where like you can't read it. It's There's, on top. They put it on top. Now, I bet for both guys, both guys would be like kind of indifferent, but like I think what it is is when these are laying on the deck, having them horizontal this way is probably easy to like pick out your rod. 
or whatever. But I like this. This is vertical so that when you're holding the router, you pick it up, you know exactly what you're looking at. I like that. It's just like little touches. They just do things different and they can do that because they're man they're manufacturing all these like at their own facilities, which we need to have casking on our show. And we need to talk about that because that's there's only like two companies that really can do it's, their own development like that. It's such a redemption arc for this company. <laughs> Big because time. I would have called this company absolute garbage five years ago. Three years ago, and even? I, pro I probably did call it garbage. No, we definitely did. Like three years ago, maybe we probably <laughs> yeah. did that. And I have to like walk yeah. that back because they're doing things that all only the big, big companies are doing. They're taking home home run swings, but then they can make like really niche, unique stuff mm -hmm. that's just awesome. And in this case, at a crazy value that other companies just can't or more than likely just won't do. So with the Kestrels, we got the 6.9 Lite and we got mm -hmm. the 6.3 Ultra Lite. One thing I'll call out, you experience this, if you get the Feather Lite, you're going to break it if you use anything over like a 116. Yeah, you got to be really careful with it. And then yeah. it, it's one of these things where, you know, like a lot of times people are like, well, be careful when you're bringing the rod back because if there's slack and then the weight hits the rod, it'll snap it. Snap. I've actually only had that happen two times. One yeah. was at the fly rod and it was like a three weight, like a really fine, yeah. light, ultra light, you know, uh, flyaway rod. And then that thing was, I mean, it was, yeah. there was nothing on that. And the same thing happened to me with the spinning version of the casking. Again, there's nothing yeah. against it. It's just so small and fine. You really want to know what you're walking into. So just when you, yeah. if or you just if you decide to get that rod, just be aware it's very very small and it, there's no way around it. Like it's just what it's, it is. It's, it's just light. so tiny. Basically, with ultralight rods, what you got to keep in mind is that you're not setting the hook on a medium heavy, mm. right? Set the hook as if you're dealing with a dainty rod, which it is. Mm -hmm. And because you're using ultralight, ultra fine point hooks, you don't need to set the hook hard. Like if I'm jigging, I'm just lifting up on the rod like this much. That's it. And that hook's penetrating. You're fine. You got your fish. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Don't do this and you'll be all right. Yeah. Just something to point out. But there you go. And the other thing too is as these rods get more sensitive because people want more sensitivity, that also means that they're more brittle. That's just a, there's like you're giving... Yeah, and there's a give and take there between sensitivity and how much softness is in the rod. So you just gotta you yeah. gotta understand that. Ninety bucks. Good 90. luck. Good luck getting all of that componentry and any other rod. Period. But good luck. As promised, I'll call this out. The Kestrels were sent to us for free. So thanks. Shout out to Casting for letting us test those out. Uh, again, we'll do we'll put them to the test on the water and give you guys our honest feedback on that once we finally get a chance. It's still icy right now, which sucks, but- I just drove by a lake, it's still slush. We'll be there very soon. It was perfect, out of the box. Mine wasn't, but I made it fit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, we got some pig jigs. So in this box, other than the hats, which by the way, thank you guys, and then yeah. stickies, we've got some new stuff, namely, these spinner baits right here yeah, in yeah. our color. They so actually sick. reached out to us. This color is called Mud Monster. So if you guys aren't familiar with this company, Pig Jigs 247 is their Instagram handle. And now they actually have a website, pigjigs247.com. So if you want to order these, check them out. But what they did is they reached out to us and they've done this a few times in the past. And they asked us if you could make an ultralight this spinner bait, so what color would you make it? And of course, there's no surprise to anyone. We went with purple and chartreuse, duh. And they're calling this one Mud Monster. Look, we even got the hammered gold blade on there. So you get your single Colorado blade off the back. You got the little R bend with a nice light wire to it. And then obviously the ultra light jig head there. This is a 1 16th ounce spinner bait and it's gonna be the juice. And it doesn't have to be just for muddy water, by the way. This will catch anywhere. Oh yeah, it'll blast. Now, and that, the reason we wanted that color combo is because it's not often available, and certainly not often available at the light or ultra light right. weight ranges. So we were like, where's the gap? How can we help fill that gap? We get asked about single Colorado blade and black slash yep. black silver slash black chartreuse uh, spinner baits all of the time, and we look for them too. Like when someone off, like Battle Baits has the one like the one, it's probably the nicest dark yep. water one I've seen, banger. So that's why we went with that one. Uh, this is kind of what I feel like Pig Jigs is known for, so I'm about to hold up here right now. So you'll notice the weight ranges they put on here. You've got mm -hmm. 1 64th, 1 32, and 1 16th. Those are all very light. This is kind of like the mule fishing. The reason we like yep. mule fishing is they make valuable baits, that just catch fish, and they don't charge you an arm and a leg for them. That's what mm -hmm. Pig Jigs is doing, but they're more on like the jig side, spinner baits uh, in that yeah. that realm. So this is their micro jig, and they're actually using the mule fishing jig head, like the actual hook and jig is the, that mule fishing jig. But look at that little itty bitty jig. It is gorgeous. Ultra finesse, ultra light, BFS certainly. You can add whatever plastic that your little heart desires, but these things are freaking sweet. 
and he's got a, a bunch of different versions. And mm. actually, now Mule Fishing makes this box, right? And it's a really cool box. It's got like foam inserts on one side, open on the other side. You can put all your, for an ultralight, this weighs like four pounds. So it's loaded because I put all of my stuff in it. And these are only 10 bucks, the box, not everything yeah. else. Now for a few more dollars, uh, Pig Jigs actually puts these jigs into this box and you get like, I think nine jigs yep. with his setup. They're always going out of stock. He like just makes them, he Constantly posts them, out. they go. So go check Pig Jigs 247, see if you can get yourself one of these boxes and a bunch of these jigs and just go catch like whatever fish is swimming, period. All right, lastly, he included one more jig in here and this is where it started with our connection with him. Uh, so we've got a hand tied EWG style, Gorgeous. right? So you can rig this weedless, Ned head. So we've got this one in the truce color. <gasps> which is our favorite go-to. So you can see the copper flake even up on the jig head there, chartreuse skirt, uh, a little bit of a like green pumpkin with copper flake skirt as well. This thing's money. I have caught quite a few fish on it. Love it to death. And that's one tenth of an ounce. Now, how does this fit into the 2024 things that we're most excited about? Ultralight. BFS, BFS. slash ultralight is where <laughs> yeah. we're going to continue to live. It's been a thing for us the last couple of years. People are getting more and more excited about it. And we're looking for like smaller companies that are yep. making cool and innovative things. Uh, or in a second, we're going to show you bigger companies, but still in the medium size that are reaching out and like exposing you to yep. new tactics, new techniques and have all the gear that you need. So casking with a BFS is certainly one of them that fits right in the realm. Uh, Pig jigs, making that ultralight stuff. Mule fishing, making the ultralight stuff. And just like, how many ultralight jigs in 132 or 164 can you find? Uh, can you find? Not many. Like, not many at all. So before mule fishing and pig jigs, we would, we'd go searching one. and yeah, you could get the Kitech mono spin jig. Bitty bitty? It's, it's mostly like JDM stuff. The Ike's Bitsy jig is 1 16th of an ounce. Yeah. I don't I don't even know if you can get it in 132. I don't, like this, this is one, they go down to 1 64th. Yeah. That's just not common. You're now, not I'm not saying that. they don't exist. So before you go in the comments and you're like, you can't find it. Look, I know that you can find them <laughs> other places, but this is like easy to yeah. find, low price, stock up. For, ask the guy for a custom color. If it's a banger color, they might just make it. Like that's the level at which we're at. So that's what we're trying to find for you guys. Uh, also, Pig Jigs was kind enough to send these hats, stickers, and these jigs and spinnerbaits out to us. So shout out to them. We appreciate you. The comments and ratings speak for themselves with companies like this. I, yeah, that, I agree. All right, next up, we're getting into one of the hottest, most talked about, most fire, misunderstood also. By me. Uh, techniques that is coming to bass fishing 2024. Uh, it actually started getting super hot last year. We didn't catch it really in time. We didn't get a chance to test it out on the water before the season closed for us here in Michigan. And before you say, well, overseas, it's been a big deal. Overseas, it's been a big deal for a while. They know what they're doing. We're they're stealing it from them. We understand that. Overseas is always way ahead. You can assume they're five to 10 years ahead of whatever trends we get in the US. That's always the case. It's the case with media. It's the case with video games. It's the case with- Not like, Taylor Swift though, everything else. No, they were behind on Taylor <laughs> Swift. Uh, so it's the case with most things overseas. They're always ahead. Not you know even what? close. Deal with it. So we're picking up their scraps off the kitchen floor. <laughs> it is what it is. It's so true though. All right, now that we have our scraps from said floor, let's take a look at them. We're looking at hover rigs and hover strollings, yes. which we may or may not get into a topic of this on a future live, or maybe we already we have. We will. We probably already have. By the we time this drops, have. we already have. We've already had Rar fishing on, and he's just like, he's in touch with the JDM yeah. market because of his it. affiliation with these folks. Yep. Uh, but then he's also just like, he's fishing highly pressured, a lot of clear water. He gets the salt and the fresh water yep. because of where he is in the Northeast. And he's just like all about these little like crazy new JDM techniques. He's awesome. And that's Rar. So you've already seen some of it. We're, just, we're gonna show you this now. And hopefully after that live, you had a better understanding of what hover rigs versus hover strolling is because it's two different things. And a lot of people use hover strolling interchangeably with rigs and they're wrong. So let's talk about the real stuff. So now we've got a whole bunch of really cool JDM products from our friends over at Bait Finesse Empire. Uh, we reach out to them all the time. Rar Fishing, The Hunter Fisher, and Amir, the guy who actually runs the shop. They are fantastic people. If you guys have questions on anything Ultralight or BFS, I'd recommend you reach out to them and talk to them. I, I do that. <laughs> we constantly do, I do it because we're hopefully 
or I admit, I, I'm admitting, ignorant I'm, of it. <laughs> I'm willingly uh, admitting that I'm ignorant when it comes to a lot of this stuff because it's just, it'd be hard to go out and learn this without someone explaining it to you. These are the guys we're talking about. Go check them out. Look at that flashy decal. It's fantastic. So we're going to show you guys what hover strolling is. So this is uh, the Jackal Revoltage, Revoltage? Revoltage, Revoltage, whatever. It's the RV Drift Fry. Uh, very cool plastic. So you can see right here, uh, they are literally designed for hover strolling plastics. You can kind of see like how to thread them on, uh, just the right way to make sure that you're taking um, full advantage of the way this bait was designed. So what's cool about this is it's got this lip right here. With hover strolling, what makes it different than the hover rig? Uh, and we'll kind of go into both of them. So the hover rig is like a jerk bait and based on the weight that you put into the plastic or the weight of the hook or the jig, depending on how you structure it, it's gonna hover at a certain depth and you can twitch it just like kind of like a jerk bait or you can swim it and it's going to move through the water at a certain depth so if you like it's it's like a forward facing sonar like i hate to say design but it just matches really well because if i can see where the fish are like oh they're at six feet i can see them moving around there's five of them right there you kind of mess with your plastic set up the whole thing get it down to that five foot range and then you roll it right through uh so it's like a it's like a drop shot without the drop so that's the hover rig. This is hover strolling. This is gonna be more of a consistent retrieve. And what you're gonna get with these plastics is a side to side roll. And if you don't get the roll on the fall and on the, or on the tree, then you're not strolling. You're not doing it the way that it was intended to be done. If it doesn't roll, it ain't a stroll. If it doesn't oh! roll, it ain't a stroll. <laughs> so this is a three inch plastic. I'll break one out Dude, for you. From my perspective, and this is my humble opinion, I don't even know if this is fact, <laughs> it sounds to me like spy baiting. Just maybe designed to be in a shallower depth. Yeah, and like higher in the water column. And less obtrusive, right? Yep. Like the, the a spy bait, uh, really, really thin hard, hard body, plastic, but has flashy. the props on both sides. Yep. This is gonna be like maybe a little more finesse version Look of that. Look at that. So this is a gorgeous That's plastic, so cool. highly detailed, a lot of different pieces in it, right? So you've got the flash, you have a lot of different layers in this plastic. They're really hard to show, but there's a lot of layers in here. You get the detail eyes, and then you, this is what's gonna give you that really unique action. So none of this is hard, like hard plastic. This is all like so, the same soft plastic material. Really cool looking bait. And then it's, again, designed to work for hover strolling. Bait Finesse Empire being a wholly like JDM supply store, you can expect to spend a little bit more. JDM stuff just is more expensive. Uh, a lot of it to us is totally worth it. To some people, they're gonna be like, no, thank you. I'm not gonna spend that kind of money. That's your call, your opinion, and that's totally fine. And they carry Mule and they carry Naco, so they have plenty of low priced options they and they do. have a lot of introductory level stuff too. So we were just looking at rods mm -hmm. and I was like, there's a lot of like hundred dollar Cernoia ish. makes a lot of great options. The Dark, Dark Wolf, Wolf Ultra is it's a great reel to start with. So yes, JDM stuff like we're looking at here can be but more expensive. High to low. There is, there's a range. We bought everything in this box, mm -hmm. and I think there was one throw in. That there's Amir, one throw in. Yeah, we got um, one throw in plastic. Amir threw us a free bait to check out, so that was cool. <clears throat> right, so PDL hover strolling fish. Just oh, God, the color's dope. I know. Flash them and yeah, I just want the Temco. I'll get this out and show this later. So this is the Temco, the PDL. Temco makes a lot of really high quality stuff. Uh, another hover strolling plastic. Now you can see there's basically two segments to this bait. You get this, come on, zoom in. You get a really realistic, this is a perch color. That's a pretty good perch. That's a nice perch. Uh, and the tail- That's a nice perch. That's a nice perch. <laughs> and the, the tail, you can tell, that's where all the action is coming from. It gets really trimmed right at the joint. Uh, is it gonna get pulled off? Probably, but that means you got a bite. So like, was it worth it? You have to decide. Now, when I say, is it worth it? All these bags of plastics are in the nine to eleven dollar range, so they are not free. But this is a hollow plastic right here, and that's helping you with that buoyancy. So buoyancy is an important part of the hover strolling technique and the hover rig that we'll cover in a little bit. That helps you can again control that uh, depth that you're holding these plastics at. But yeah, this thing is gorgeous and just really finely detailed. I can't speak to the action. It does seem like the action is gonna be the best part of this bait. We'll see when we get it under the water. So here's one from Fish Arrow. Uh, Fish Arrow, they, we've, they've been on the channel before. They make the heavy poop, which is like the most, they just went right at it. They were like, nah, it's a heavy piece of poop. It's a turd. It's a great bait, uh, it but is. it is what it is. Also a little more on the expensive side, but these things are freaking gnarly. So this is the Flash J in the two inch model. And these have some juice on them, holy crap. But look at the realism on this, like holy crap. The shine, it's probably one of the more realistic shines out oh, there. 
It's cr great. just crazy it. good. So clear water, absolutely going to be a specialty. Again, what you're seeing on a lot of these plastics, they're very straight. Uh, they a lot of times have a hollow or like a thicker belly area, again, to create some kind of buoyancy, and they're super realistic. This is going to be for clear water. Anytime like a drop shot's going to win, this is also going to win. It's got some stank on it. But yeah, gorgeous little bait. Fish arrow, they make some good stuff. So with this technique, you're going to do a lot of messing around, like Paul was saying, with buoyancy and weights with your plastics. And that's to get it to the depth that you want it at, where you're still getting that kind of rolling uh, action that you're looking for. And part of that is going to also include weights. So you're probably going to want to add some weight to that plastic. A great option for that would be nail weights. So we got three different weights here from 132 all the way down to 164. Look at how tiny those are. So those 164s are from NACO. And then these other two are the decoy sinker nails. We link up with fish. I like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. So these are decoy sinker nail weights from decoy. And look at their little slogan there. We link up with fish. Hit them up. Let's go. Now Jeff's talking about weights. That's more of what they call like, it's really weird. I'm still learning a lot about this, but it's technically mid strolling. So it's like it's so hover mid. strolling, but more mid. But like not mid in a bad not way, a like bad it's way. average, more mid is in the middle of the water column. <laughs> a lot of these hover strolling baits and really technically yep. hover strolling is going to be with a hook that looks like this, a J type hook. Uh, and, and just the hook and the plastic. Yep, the, the hook it. by itself. Now you're going to see a couple different versions. You can see that this one has sort of a bait keeper on that's, it. That's cool. That's really nice, especially if you want to keep your plastics, which I personally do if I spend like a dollar of plastic and want to hold on to those bad boys. No. Uh, but then you have your blank hooks too. Now I would recommend you gotta, you're gonna need some different sizes unless you have like one plastic yeah. that you know you're going to like. Like I, I think the Jackal is the one I'm most excited about. It's yeah. the one that I've heard quite a bit about being really successful. So I would start here. So this is a three inch hook. I'm pairing that with the largest one here. So that's probably gonna be that number two, uh, but it's gonna be one of your longer, larger hooks. Uh, so I got a number two. This one is the decoy jig. And then I got another decoy jig in a number six. And then these ones, I just, I really wanted to try. This one's going to match up with that fish arrow, especially mm. because they're hollow bodied. Anything yeah. that's hollow bodied, you're probably gonna want it some kind of hook keeper just to make sure that it stays rigged the way that you rigged it. It doesn't slide on the And hook. it doesn't yeah. slide off. Uh, so this is a number three. This is the spine hook. It's really, actually it's a really nice looking hook. And you can take cheat code. Yeah. Uh, you can actually just take some thread and maybe some super glue and tie on like a piece of like 20 or 30 pound like mono or fluoro uh, backward facing onto one of these hooks. Maybe I'll do another video on that later uh, to make one of these into a hook holder all on its own. So that's a little a little tip. If you don't want to buy both, you can just buy a couple of these and then make your own. Is it Jack All or Jackal? <sighs> Jack All. <laughs> but, but their logo is a Jackal. I prefer Jack All. You know what? Jack Mall. How about jack -em all So don't quote us on this, but sometimes we get these little things that have a gift sticker on it. Look at that. If you spend a certain amount of money that they just throw something I in. I think so. Which is cool. Glimmer 6. This is the Glimmer I don't even, 6. Yeah. I don't even know what to do with this, but I think I love it. Look at that. So we got a hard body bait, gold and flashy. There's a little like purple uh, flashy material coming off of the back treble there. Top hook though. So you got the rear treble, but then look at this. There's a little two prong top hook and a magnet. So it holds that hook in place. Reverse mag draft. This thing is insane. I Be love it's it. It's bizarro mag draft. Really cool. <laughs> really cool little bait. So, I, last time, <laughs> I think when I bought a, a reel, I think I got a the Daiwa Topwater walking bait. Oh, nice. Which is pretty dope. So Bait Finesse part. Empire, I was like uh, totally new to yep. hover strolling, hover rig, mid strolling, mm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, didn't know what I wanted, so what I did yeah. is I actually, I'm not lying, I went to Bait Finesse Empire, mm -hmm. logged in, uh, typed hover rig, and it was like, whoomp, and they even, this is one of my favorite things, on the plastics, yeah. like on the window where like all of your search results are, yeah. so without clicking into something, they do this for rods, reels, yeah. and for their plastics and their hard baits. It just uh -huh. says like generally what they're used for. Topwater walking bait, oh. hover yeah. strolling, yeah, hover yeah. rig. Yeah. Uh, like in the text right under the picture. So like without knowing a single thing, I knew I was getting something that was designed or could work for hover rig, hover strolling, et cetera, et cetera. Then I went and asked the guys and I was like, all right, I have 88 things in my cart. What should I grab? And they were like, Boo -boo -boo -boo. and then I deleted half of it and bought the rest. <laughs> so I'm telling those guys. And you can email them yeah. and they will hook you up. Like Amir yeah. is the coolest dude and he knows so much. So mm -hmm. if you're ever unsure and you didn't quite get what you wanted from the website, just send them an email and be like, hey, yo, what should I do? 
and they'll tell you. Yeah, or you can also just go hit up Hunter Fisher and RAR Fishing, R-A-W-R, -R, and just bother them on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> like, it's just a flood of people to them. You're welcome. <laughs> also, sorry, bro. Also, not sorry, bro. Oh, God. So next up, the folks over at, I'll just show you one of these, a little sneak peek, Core Tackle decided to hook us up. Now, you guys have seen us unbox Core Tackle twice before. One, mm -hmm. somebody sent us their Tush Swimbait Jigs as a gift. That was the intro. I had no idea they existed. That was yeah. the first I'd ever heard of them. First time we got them, first time we heard of them, we were like, these are neat. I like this. And then recently, you guys also saw us do a pretty big unboxing from Tackle Warehouse and Omnia and a couple different places. I think Six Sense too was in there. Whole bunch of different things, right? And we got some Core Tackle hover rigs in that, hover rigs, because we're going to get into that in just a second. Uh, but really cool looking things. And then Core Tackle was like, hey, by the way, you forgot all of the stuff that we make. So they sent us everything. I had no idea. And now that I'm yeah. here, I'm like, this was perfect. So yeah. a lot of times, again, we're trying to find the smaller companies that are doing cool things. This is like very niche, uh, yeah. but they did such a good job. They nailed it. So you guys may have seen this on the channel before. It might look familiar, but this is a big old heavy swim jig hook. It is a seven aught hook, three quarters of an ounce. That's and then enough. here would be an example of a seven aught one quarter of an ounce. So you can see just how much lead they're putting on that hook body. And then I have a two, two aught, one eighth ounce. So this is the smaller one. One thing I wanna point out, uh, this is basically, not basically, this is just a nail weight molded to not quite a J-hook, but basically a J-hook jig. Simple, but no one else is really making these. So this is like the place, enough. not that I'm aware yeah. of. Uh, so, and, and these are very good quality. So that was the thing that kind of, I was like a little nervous about. It's like, yeah. oh, someone who's just getting into terminal tackle. You get like right? the lead tags. You, yeah, you get like snip, like unsnipped ends. Yeah. Like even where the, see the barb right there? Sometimes where the barb pops out, there's like a bent edge or they're not popped out all the way. There's like a lot of, or, or like this is loose, pollution. right? The lead <laughs> yeah. is just like coming off. Yeah. That doesn't exist with these. I have not seen a single one. I'm not saying you won't get one, but it's I've seen everyone I've seen has been exactly Clean. as I intended it. And they yep. even do such a good job with the molds where the larger swim hooks and some of these hover rigs, where the hook point pops out, it has like its own section to bolster where that point comes out to yep. make sure the rig is perfect. So I'll show you that in a second. But the one drawback with the tush, and I just want to call this out, you have to be really careful when you're rigging this with a non-Z-Man type elastic, super stretchy plastic because you gonna break. It. Once, well, once you rig it, like it's done. Like you're, that is that is the hook you're going to use yeah. for that plastic until it's RIP. Until you so rip it out. Until it dies. <laughs> so it's like just be really, really careful. Measure carefully. I just there's a video on my Instagram me messing around with a Z-Man. Mess mm -hmm. around with like a plastic you either don't care about or stretchy enough to withstand this. But once you just shove a nail weight this big into the front of a plastic, especially a big swimming one, you're done. Yep. That's it. So be careful <laughs> and just be cognizant about what you're putting these on. All right, so next up, this is a, a pretty new rig. I don't see a lot of people talking no. about this. And it, it to us, it kind of goes in line with like the hover rig, hover strolling. Techniques that we want to try. These, well, that we're going to try. For 24. Because now we have them. So this is called the Ozark rig. And what you get here is the molded weight onto what's essentially a flipping hook with a different position of your hook eye. So you got that bend to the hook eye presentation is gonna be changed up with this and you're gonna rig it like a flipping bait. You've even got a little molded bait keeper there, plus it'll be ahead of the bent eye so it's not sliding up and off of this thing, which is really cool. So you can do anything with this. There's a lot of different ways that you could actually fish this thing. This one is one eighth of an ounce with a four aught hook and you can obviously add weight to it if you want to, or you can leave it just like this. So we can add a bullet weight ahead of it. Uh, we can go do heavy flipping. We can flip pads if we want to. Or you can drag. So like this is an alternate for a Carolina rig too. So I'll do it. We'll, we'll rig up a plastic. We're gonna do it. On a, we're gonna do it right now. But here is, the one thing I like is their instructions on the back of these cards. They're so simple because you may have bought the Ozark rig, hearing that it was cool, had knowing nothing about it. You may have bought the hover rig, same thing, no idea how to rig it. Like, and all these, like you would think that, oh, this is not a big deal. This actually is what I used when I first did the hover rig and it actually helped me out a ton. So yeah, first, first, just like use the back of the card. It's really, it really is that simple. So Jeff's using the Beast Coast Marauder. These are always on sale on the Beast Coast site uh, and they are one of the best flipping baits. I mean, I love these. It's not the flipping delight, but if mm -hmm. you want to craw, banger. So you rig it like you're using a flipping bait, right? So we just use, as if we're doing a Texas rig, we come through, we slide this thing all the way up over that weight, over that little hook keeper there. We spin the plastic 
all right? So now the plastic's at the front, and then if you want to go weedless, you just bury that hook into the bait body. Or go the other way and do a weedless. Either way. Bam. Or so you end up with something like this. Or do it I'll just like a it out. Or there just do go. it like a Texas where you poke mm -hmm. it all the way through and Yeah, you can text pose it as well. So a lot of guys doing flipping baits, they like to just bury that hook so you're completely weedless. So you just get that body as straight as you can, but pretty sick. Yeah. And now it's one eighth of an ounce, so I can flip it just like that, or I can add a lot more weight. Or you can poke it through mm -hmm. all the way through, like so. And then you can expose. expose it that way. So Bury that, that is point. still weedless, but a little more finessey. And if you're not going to get as good of a hook set, that helps your hook setting odds. So, and you could use a lot of different types of plastics on this. This is just one example, but just larger plastics like this one, that's kind of what it's made for. So Ozark is like alternate flipping. And we are, I mean, this is one of the hot techniques of 24 that we are certainly looking to get some expertise in and try out. All right. I guess I'm leaving it rigged. All right, so next up we got the hover rig. So you've probably seen this before because they are hella popular right now. This is one with a weed guard, a little metal weed guard. Not the biggest fan of this style, but if you're fishing heavy cover, like that's what you're gonna do. And here's one without a weed guard, which is the one I'll more commonly grab. They come in all different weights and sizes of hooks, but you can see that you essentially have that molded nail weight. So you'll notice above the hook eye here, we actually have the point of that nail weight as well. So what you do is you actually, Paul will show you how to rig this in a second. You rig it below the head of the bait, and then this is gonna get tucked into the front part of that bait. So here you go. And why is that rig important? It. Why is that important? So with the mid strolling, we were talking about that nail weight, you would rig your hook through, and the hook has no weight on it. And if you need some more weight, or because you wanna be in the middle of the water column, mid strolling, you just take a nail weight and you shove it through the nose of that plastic and that create that keeps the balance because it's in the front and you got the hook in the rear but it also keeps you uh keeps you rolling this is going to be very similar so again hover rig you want the plastic to be perfectly level in the water but with the jig head you want it to be down a little lower so the counterbalance having this in the middle of your bit in your bait instead of at the very front and then having the weight be a little bit past this point keeps everything level i do recommend if you're doing this for the first time use a z-man type plastic this is the nico -based Bait's leech, wonderful bait. And again, a lot of times you're gonna be twitching this to keep it in the same water column and you wanna like keep it in the strike zone. So you're not always gonna be doing a straight retrieve. You're gonna cast it, let it get to its intended uh, depth. Then you're gonna sit there and just let it do its thing and twitch it back, maybe like more like a jerk bait. So longer, thinner plastics are gonna be kind of what most people are gonna gravitate towards. Do whatever you want. There's no rules in fishing. If it catches the fish, do whatever you want. But this is the type of thing you're gonna be looking for. So do something stretchy at first. And then my biggest tip other than that is measure like really carefully like with your thumb or you can see how these all these little ridges use these ridges as guidelines so take your bait or take your hook and lay it up against your bait and just figure out okay yeah this is where I want this plastic to come in second ridge is where I'm gonna put the put the hook point in and I want it to come out maybe at this last ridge right here that and then just be really careful while you're rigging it so again second ridge Putting it in, I'm going. I'm aiming for the dead center of the plastic. I'm trying to keep this very straight so that anytime I swim or twitch it, it's gonna run as straight and as straight as possible. So now I've got it rigged in. So now I'm pulling it through, and now I got to pull it past that jig head. And I got to bury that on this side. All right. So there is your hover rig. Not the most perfect example, but it should still work. Uh, ideally, again, you want this somewhere to the back of the bait, and then you just got to make sure that this is as straight as you could possibly get it. The straighter it is, the more perfectly it's rigged, the better it's gonna work its way back. And then you gotta mess around a little bit. You gotta find, to get to that right range, you gotta mess around with the weights and combo it with the buoyancy of the plastic. These Nikos float, Z-Man's float. A lot of these are hollow bodies, so they're gonna have some flotation to them. So I didn't do the greatest job, but here's a juggle minnow on the same hover rig right there. So that's a pretty good option too. Any like high action bait like that. A lot of your drop shot stuff could work great for this. And then obviously- Finesse worms. Finesse any, worms, stuff like that. Fork tail flukes, smaller mm -hmm. ones, the fluke type baits. That, like that. That's really kind of the juice. That's where people yep. are having a lot of success. That doesn't mean other stuff won't work, but that's what's being successful. So again, something we're really excited to try. I will say this too. The nice thing about Core Tackle is they offer a lot of different hook sizes, a lot of different uh, ranges of hook, and then a lot of different weights. They have- Ah, look at all those. So here's the range. I've got a lot of stuff in between, but the smallest one that, at least that I'm aware of, is the size four, 132. So that is pretty freaking small, all the way up to a 3-0, 332. Great range, a lot of different hook variations and combos in there. They got the weedless, and they have the 
Weed full, make your choice. I personally like these. This is all about hookup ratio, so I personally like this. You gotta do you, depending on where you fish, but I love these, these are really cool. Kudos to Core Tackle for making a niche product very high quality and making it available to you. And again, bringing something that's more JDM market to the domestic market. Oh my Josh, we forgot something. Uh, we actually picked up two of these here from Hog Farmer. If you guys haven't heard of a little tiny itty bitty channel called Tactical Bassin, they have been making baits for a little while now. Some pretty like high end, super premium quality part type baits. Being that this video was all about hot new techniques, we figured these were very fitting for it. Plus, we had already been talking about ultra light a rigs. So recently we unboxed the ultralight A rig from a very small creator uh, who is making these handmade all by himself, George DLC 12, and they are this big. This is a this is the umbrella rig too. This isn't just like an a, this is like actually the same type of thing. It has all the same Component qualities three. and components as a standard A rig. But so that's how long this is. Maybe three inches, three and a half inches. So the most Com common comment that we got on those videos all of them, because mm -hmm. we did a couple shorts and a full YouTube video on this, was that Hog Farmer and Tactical Bassin already made that. So what are you doing? You're late to the party. Who cares? What is this thing? And I was like, they're not even close to the same size. So to prove it, I went out and I bought them. So we have the Mini Flex and the Micro Flex A-Rig. Here they are. They are small. So here's a... They are definitely small. You. Here's a stand... Ah! I hooked a phone? That's uh -huh. how big it is. You can hook a telephone. <laughs> So here's a standard A-Rig, granted it has plastics, but here's mm -hmm. like a standard size A-Rig hooked up next to... Here's the Mini. Way smaller. Way, way smaller. smaller. Certainly. That That's not, no, no argument here. And then the Micro, Here's the much Micro. smaller. Half Look the size. Thing. So there's the, the Mini, the bigger jig head there, and then the Micro right there. And you can see that the Mini is a little bit longer. Now I'll go ahead and put my George DLC Ultralight. Oh my gosh. It's just not... They're not even relatively close in size. No. Okay, they're relatively close. Uh, are they? <laughs> I mean, relative is, is a statement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technically. So here's the micro. This would be as close as you can possibly get. You can see it's still a, like an inch and a half, two inches longer. And even the, the head rings. size. Like yeah. you're, you're talking about something that's the size of my fingernail, like my pinky nail, literally. Uh, something that is what? This, like, this is the size of my entire thumb. Mm -hmm. Like there's just a, that's the size differential, right? And this is not a bash on these. Like these hog farmers. Oh, it never was. These are sick. Like we own them. They will get fished. They will catch. These are cool. I recommend yep. these. But this is just something totally different. So we just want to show you guys what we were talking about. Why we keep featuring the George DLC uh, version of these. Because it's really cool. They're just really cool. And they're well made. So that aside, check this out. The hog farmer A-Rig. Here's the mini is insane. It's actually got three dummy wires. So you get this little screw lock there that you could add a snap clip to with a swivel if you want, if you wanted to have more actual like hookable rigs. But this is designed just to have a plastic screwed into that. So that's the dummy rig. And then down here, you've got three snap clips for your hookable rigs. And compare that to the smallest version that you can get from George DLC, which is, which is insane. This is, this is so small. And there's no weight on this except for the wires. Like, Mm -hmm. It's so tiny. And then that micro rig, a little bit shorter. Two dummy rig options on those wires instead of three on the mini rig. And then you got three snap clips there for your hook rigs. And these are, again, the reason we're showing you these is because this is a tactic that we're absolutely so excited to fish Down this size year. rig. Baby, micro, BFS, ultralight, whatever you want to call them, downsized A-Rigs, yeah. just sounds like a lot of fun. I want to catch two perch at the same time. <laughs> That's or, all I care about. Or a big bass, like nah. you have the opportunity for all of that. Two perch <laughs> at the same time. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, obviously we had to sneak this into this video because it goes along with those techniques. We did change. Sorry I'm wearing a different shirt. Have we're, a nice day. We were filming a different video at the time, so. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. Back to that. <laughs> all right, you guys, that's it for this unboxing. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool techniques hitting the scene right now. Very excited to try these out. Uh, we'll see if pros adapt and like start using them in pro tournaments. Maybe. Forward-facing sonar. You're already starting to see people yep. break out the fairy wand. As we, it's... we got the forward-facing sonar series. Like yes. every brand now has one. So yeah, this I could see hover rig, hover strolling hitting the scene. It sounds like it already is. No, it already it already is, yeah. and it like it's even BFS might like 100. It's there's possible. Some Japanese it's possible. anglers now that, that I, are doing it. And I would say with forward-facing sonar, it's not that 
I designed for forward-facing sonar, that's not what this is, but with drop shotting, what makes it so forward-facing sonar friendly is that you can see right where your bait is and where the fish is, and uh, these are baits that are not for searching. You're not gonna use these as a search bait. This is like, I think there's fish over there, or there's like some piece of cover, or rock pile, or whatever. You're like, I know there's a fish there. And I will put this I'm gonna there. put this there, and then it just lives <laughs> yeah. in the strike zone, right? Yeah. So you can really see what's happening, the relationship to your bait and the fish. That's where the forward-facing sonar comes in. And this is the same thing as a drop shot without the weight underneath. So obviously, it has the same kind of properties where if I think there's a, a you know clear water, sensitive fish, if I flip something in, they're gonna spook. I can throw this in there. I can watch on my forward-facing sonar how the fish are reacting to it and then get that really sensitive bite so that's just why they kind of marry up really well and then the tournament anglers are loving it when someone who maybe is from the south and doesn't get all this clear water has a bait that works really well they can use something they're familiar with forward facing sonar to find fish and then target them really easily so it, it's going to show up so let us know what you guys think of these in the comments below are you going to be using some of these techniques this year what specific brands what techniques are you using? All of that stuff. We'd love to hear it. And if there's anything that we missed that you want us to review or talk about on the channel, let us know in the comments below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Smash that like, be subscribed, come back to our lives Wednesday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. We will see you guys in the next video. Ka-chow.